Hi there, welcome back. This is actually the second intro that I've recorded to this video. The first one was when I went and did a, a walkthrough, a uh, discovery uh, walkthrough on the set that I thought was going to require a long drawn out typical restoration series. This one is to tell you that this particular set, this particular radio did not require that much work. So I've decided to focus on something else. I will still go through the findings and, um, and the characteristics of it and what was needed, but I'll also go through some of the things that uh, caught me on this. And strangely enough, what really caught me on this was how to actually dismantle this thing. It actually turned out to be a lot easier than I thought. And I thought I'd just share that with you because I couldn't find any information on that on the web. I also was fortunate enough to find a full uh, service manual for this, which gives me some of the adjustments that you can do on here. So I'm going to do those adjustments like uh, the setting of the tuning lamps and the brightness of the tuning lamps and the, uh, the uh, quiescent current set for both channels. It's all there. I'm going to do it on the set, and so I hope this serves a purpose other than just to show off this great piece of equipment. And it is a great piece of equipment. This is a Beomaster 901 from Bang & Olufsen. It's a tuner-amplifier. It's more a tuner than an amplifier, but it does produce, I believe it's 20 watts per channel. Um, it has two inputs, external inputs, a phono and a tape input, and then the usual bands, which includes FM, medium wave and long wave. The thing is really futuristic looking and I always loved this look when I was a kid and a teenager and a university student. We used to look at these things and just wish we could grow up and be able to buy one. As it happens, this one was going into the dump, literally. The person who owned this asked me if I wanted to take it away because he was throwing it away. Not only this, but also the set of speakers that I re-foamed recently in another video. And those speakers actually match this particular uh, style and the wood finish. So this thing's been made up as a set for my daughter, who's going through the vintage craze at the moment. She's 20 years old at Vasti, and this will be her hi-fi set. Now, what I found on this, the condition is pretty good. Uh, the exception is the side panels are a little bit, or uh, well, the veneers chipping off. But this thing's all futuristic. You've got these fantastic sliders. These selectors are these wafer switches. One of them is actually broken out and it's come loose, so we'll have to see what's wrong with that inside. And other than that, the uh, aluminium work is in perfect condition. Everything is here. Everything was uh, present and accounted for, so I'll get on with it. On the left here, we've got the uh, connectors for the phono and the tape input. They're DIN connectors. And then below that, you've got the antenna connectors, an AM signal and ground, as well as the FM antenna, a dipole input, and also the plug for the 60 to 75 ohm. We've got the phono jack at the back, which is a little bit unusual. And then we've got the speaker outputs, also two DIN sockets, left and right. The wood finish on the top is in perfect condition. The same cannot be said for the side panels. They uh, have the veneer chipping off. I'm going to have to find a way of replacing that and getting it exactly the same tone as the top. The, the other side's got the same problem, unfortunately, but we'll get there. Well, it's about time to open this thing up and see what we find. I have no idea how to do that. I've never been inside one of these, and I have no idea what condition the inside is in. So, another new experience. Here we go. And here's the first innovation. I had no idea how to remove this, and the only screws that I could see were that one over there, and one over here. So I thought, hey, take it out, what's going to happen? And I noticed this thing became loose, so what you do is you just remove those two screws, and then this thing bends up and slides out. So, original schematics. That's quite unique. It's uh, normal for this uh, type of device for this era, but uh, certainly not for today's stuff. Today they keep their secrets. Let's have a look inside. 
Well, <laughs> it's got quite a bit of dirt. It's got quite a bit of dirt. One massive board over here, which seems to be the main board for everything. A pretty nice power transformer there. There's another smaller board at the front. Can't see the components at all. And yeah, it sort of looks a bit messy in here. There is underneath a uh, voltage selector. So there's not much here, is there? It's all sort of on the PC board. This is obviously the FM front end. The uh, audio connectors, tape and um, phono. It's, yeah, could probably do with a bit of a cleanup. And I'm sure that this thing will have suffered the usual dry joints disease. But this is sort of old school PCB, which isn't that difficult to trace. Nothing too dramatic on here, it just depends on how easy it is to remove this thing from the, from the case. Guys, I'm going to start the praise already. I was wondering how to get this thing out the bottom off, and it's literally a question of removing the screws on the feet. Four screws, four feet, and... Ta-da! It's all there. It's all accessible. Isn't that great? Man, I love these things. They're so simple. They're so, so simple. And so now I can literally work on it in loco. And I see a lot of capacitors. So I see a lot of potential replacements. Those caps, those orange caps, they look sexy, but I'm sure most of them are dead. Some of them are very low voltage as well. So those will all need replacing. These big filter caps probably as well. There's three of them over there. I know this thing uses um, capacitor coupling to the output. In other words, I don't believe this is a dual supply. I believe this is a single supply. So zero and actually there's a that trimmer says 32 volts just. Is it a just? It could be the voltage adjustment. So let's say this uses 0 32. I thought it'd be a bit higher than that actually to get some more power. But um, the transistors, the output of transistors will be at half the supply voltage. It won't be at zero. It's not really push pull across the negative and uh, positive supply. So two of these caps here will be. The coupling caps to the output to make sure you don't get any DC on the output and the other one will be the mains filter cap. Okay I'm gonna have some fun studying this one again. <laughs> yeah I know I, uh, I get into study mode. A real nerd. But I really like to know what I'm working on, what I'm doing before I even start because I really don't know if this thing's working or not, and I might just be tempted to try after I've had a look at it a little bit more closely and looked at the schematic and so on. I'll get back to you. Well, I've got all the fragile bits out of the way. I managed to remove the bottom and the top cover, as I showed you, and I also managed to remove these side plates. They unclip from four little clips on there, and I took them both out because the veneer on them is cracking, which makes them pretty sensitive. So now I've got the chassis raw and sturdy, so I can work with this more comfortably. I've also noticed a few things already. If you recall, this thing was out, and when I put it back in, it sort of clips on one side and the other side is missing. And this thing fell out of the bottom. So this is the bit that broke off there, and I'm sure that I can get it back in. The other thing I noticed is this cap looks like it's leaked. And I think this is the, um, the coupling, a DC coupling cap to the output. 
So, yeah, I was right. These caps have seen better days. They've been around for a long, long time. And um, I think before I do anything, I better change at least these big guys. Make sure we don't have any surprises when we turn it on. I can see the pots, the sliders. They've done that. And they're a bit rough because they need lubrication. So that should be quite easy. These are easy to lubricate. You just spray some uh, contact cleaner down the middle there and you move them backwards and forwards and usually that does the job. Everything else looks pretty simple. Right, quite a bit later. I've gone quite a few steps further actually. What I did is I replaced these guys over here. Those were the two output caps, output coupling caps and the uh, main uh, mains filter cap. As you can see, the two on the right are actually leaking and there's a big bulge coming through like a wart. And you can see some leaking. Now the one on the left doesn't look too bad, but that was replaced as well. These were all 3000 microfarads. I've used the coupling caps, I've used 3300s. And the uh, filter cap, instead of a 3000, I've used a 4700. Now these were put in, and then I started on these sexy guys. And what I found surprised me, really surprised me. All of them, without exception, measured perfectly well. In fact, when I compared them to some new ones that I was going to replace them with, some Nichicons, these things beat them in terms of uh, ESR, and the value is spot on just about. So I gave it some serious thought and decided that instead of replacing all these guys and um, changing its color, <laughs> wrong reason to not do something, but that's me, I decided to leave them. They are in perfect condition for now. Now, that's not to say they won't change, that won't change in the future, but for now, I thought it would be really unnecessary to uh, scavenge the board. So I've left them in. And then of course I took this one step further and I've put in a mains plug and I was able to actually test this and I'm going to show you the results. All right, this is the setup. I've got the radio connected to the dim bulb tester at the back there. I have, that's with the new mains plug. I have two speakers connected going through that dummy load. It's connected to speaker at the moment. And I have a crocodile clip coming from the FM antenna into one of the FM ports over there. And no surprise, I'm going to switch it on. I'm going to switch on the dummy load. Let me just show you the light bulbs. So dummy load is on, maximum limit, only one light bulb is on. And I'm going to hit FM. Too little voltage and it cleans up. This um, fine tuning thing, I've realized that the idea here is that you tune. I don't know if this was what they intended. This is what I've started doing. You tune like this. And you can fine tune like that. But it's got AFC on there. But that's slipping, so that's not too good. Volume control over here. The balance, it's a bit stuck. But it's working. Base, oh, that's too much. So our FM is working quite well. The uh, tuning indicator is not working at all. And um, the stereo lamp comes on. That's the treble. Now, if I put it on medium wave, the way this is set up is there's a, a main aluminium structure down the middle here, and then there's two sections that um, lift up and lift down, or drop down. 
And the way you remove that, there are absolutely no screws. What they do have is they've got these clips over here. And the way you get them out is you put a small screwdriver here and you just There we go. And this thing comes out. And then this just lifts up. It's got a, another plastic receptor there, which this thing clips into. And as I said, the reason I know is I broke one of these. These things are very, very brittle by now. And so I had to <laughs> I had to make one. You will not believe just how useful chopsticks can be. It actually works quite well because the grain of the chopstick, it's bamboo and it's sort of longitudinal. And you carve this out and this thing's working perfectly on the other side. So I'm no longer afraid of breaking these, but you shouldn't break them anyway. And this thing comes out, you do the other side as well, and this lifts out completely. So you lift this up and all you have on there is the lamp holders. Now the way this works is there are three lamps. They're actually pretty clearly shown on the schematic. There's one lamp here which is a stereo indicator and there are two here on the left and the right which are the tuning indicators. Now these lamps are a bit of a problem. All three were burnt out and I managed to find replacements, but not exactly the same current. Now, there's a problem here. You can't just replace them with diodes because the way this works is that um, the strength of the tuning signal on these two actually serves to divert current from one common current line and diverts it to the left lamp or the right lamp, depending on the strength of the tuning. So they say you should use uh, 12 volt lamps at 30 milliamps. And you can actually adjust two things on here. You can adjust the uh, general brightness of the lamps with one of the trimmers, which we will do later. And you can adjust the actual uh, current sharing. In other words, you could uh, tune to a strong signal and then you can make sure that both are equally well lit. And that sets the level at which uh, it considers the zero tuning or optimum tuning, I suppose. That one over there is just a straight 12 volts, one watt lamp. And um, that just gives you the stereo signal indicator. So that's not too much of a problem. The ones I've got are all 1.2 watts. And I'm not sure that they're going to work here because 1.2 watts is actually a 12 volt at 100 milliamps. So I haven't tried that. We'll try that and see if that works. But what I like about this and what I wanted to show you is how clean this thing is. It just comes up and there we go. And then you've got access to the things you need to clean. And I've actually done quite a bit of cleaning on here. I cleaned this uh, gear. It's a roller and also the track itself because this thing rolls that way and you can you then adjust fine tune it and there's a glass or perspex plate in the front with with the uh, indicator line on it which you shouldn't break or scratch so what i've done is i've cleaned all this i've cleaned the track i've cleaned the um the the, the rail in which it runs and oiled it very gently i've cleaned the uh pulleys there with the strings. That's the volume control, which is actually controlled um, from the other axis. It, you know, you, you're basically making that roll and that's your volume control. And then this one here goes and it goes off to the tuning condenser at the back there. And those were all in perfect condition. So that's what I did on this side. Cleaned all that. Now I'm going to put the top back on because I can actually get access to the lamps from the back now that I know how to remove them. And then we'll do the lamps later. I want to show you the underside as well. Now the underside comes out in exactly the same way. You take out two clips and then it just lifts off completely. And you're left with full access to all the switches 
over here and you can clean those as well which I have done. You also have access to the sliders which I've cleaned as well and it's all accessible over there. So this is uh, quite a neat system. The other thing that I was able to do when I got down here if you recall the uh, phono the phono connector over here was loose but I had that little piece of plastic over there and I managed to glue it on there. Now what I needed to do, this was very very thin, I actually needed to put a small layer of glue um, and strengthened it with uh, bicarbonate of soda. If you don't know that trick you should try that. Put some glue on a surface and drop bicarbonate soda over it and it becomes really really hard and you can sand it becomes completely solid and that's what I've done and this now works perfectly. These are the lamps we use. They just slide into there. There's no polarity. They DC lamps but there's no polarity. They incandescent and there as well and then you fit the one on each side. This one as you can see has already got the lamp on. So, if I switch this on, FM, get a stronger station. There we go, stereo lamp is on. The tuning, however, we can't see at all. So, I need to do some adjustments. And I've got two, two trimmers that I can adjust to get the brightness up and then to do the division between the left and the right. And those are the two trimmers right at the bottom here on the other side. One is for um, intensity and one is for splitting the current between the one and the other. The top one you see there is the intensity and the bottom one is the sharing. So now I'm going to show you the front and then I'm going to twist those things around, spin them around a little bit and see if we can get some life back into it. Okay, so I've got this tuned to a fairly strong station and if I tune away from it, it shows me that side but it doesn't show me the other side. So it's not balanced properly. It's also very dim, so let me give it a bit more brightness. And now I need to balance the two. This is perfectly tuned, well, as perfectly as you can get. And you should have them sort of pointing to the center, equal brightness, I suppose. That goes the other way. That goes back, so I guess that's where it should be. Now, uh, yeah, it's not a very good indicator, is it? It's about as good as it gets with these lamps. I'm not sure whether the others worked any better. But that's where it's going to stay. And the, uh, the stereo one is working well. Okay, let me show you another adjustment we can make. That little trim pot over there the one that says just 32 volts just that's a 32 volt adjustment and the way you adjust it is you set a voltmeter between that side of that resistor and ground and you adjust that for exactly 32 volts so let's set that up okay what we're getting is 31.4 but I do have the light uh, limiter on I'm gonna increase the limit see if it changes and it doesn't now I'm measuring the voltage at the top of that resistor and we'll just trim it a little bit, wrong way, and that'll do me, 32 volts. That is for the preamp circuits, so that's now done.
There is one other setting we need to do related to the indicator lamps and that is the AM signal light and what it does is it operates on the uh, FM tuning one we've just adjusted and it's that pot over there, that trimmer over there, R26. It's hidden way down there and what they tell you to do is uh, set it on long wave. I've got it set on medium wave, I suppose it's the same thing and um, turn it totally clockwise and then tune it off a station turn it counterclockwise till you get a little bit of light and then when you tune it into the station it should strengthen up now i've got it set already but i might just adjust it a little bit so i have it off a station there nothing coming through and i'm going to adjust it till we get just a glimmer Nothing, too much, just a glimmer. I think that's about right. Now if I go onto a station, there we go, that one's done as well. Now the last adjustment we need to do is actually the quiescent current, the no load current. And uh, what they tell you to do is put the volume on zero and everything else centered. Select the tape input. In other words, you don't want any input. And you've got to adjust the current across those two resistors. Those are the two 5 watt or 10 watt resistors they have there. And what you're doing is actually adjusting the bias current that goes through the transistors on no, no signal. So in other words, the no load quiescent current. Now I need to find where I'm going to do that channel first. I need to find where to put the probes. Now what we're going to do is we go to adjust that trimmer over there. That is R137. And we need to measure the voltage across this resistor. Now one of the points is easy to get to. It's there. The other one you can do it on the other side. But I'm going to find where the other end of the resistor goes to. And then I'm going to adjust, see what measurement I get on there. They say you should set it for 10 millivolts. That is to achieve a 25 milliamp uh, current through it, no signal current, because that resistor is a 0.39 ohm resistor. So let me set that up. I've actually managed to connect one probe of the multimeter to that leg of the uh, resistor. And this one's actually going to the emitter itself of the transistor and I know that that's where that resistor is coming from. So now let's see what we get on the multimeter. Well we're not far off, we're at 8.2. Now I'm going to adjust that trimmer, that R26 that I mentioned, and try and get it to 10 millivolts. This seems to be very very touchy as usual. Oh, you should not do that. That trimmer is incredibly crusty, so I'll put in some contact cleaner and see if we can adjust it now. Well, that's good enough. 10 millivolts. Why was it jumping around? Well, I think the uh, contact wasn't being made at all. I'm actually increasing the limit on the uh, limb bulb tester because I reduced it when that thing was jumping around. Let me adjust it again. That's about as good as it's going to get. The uh, trimmer is pretty crusty, which makes it dangerous to play around with it because it can actually just open circuit and then the thing has got no control. So I'm leaving it at 9.37. That's damn close enough. Now I'm going to do the same with the other channel. It's across that resistor there and this is the trimmer here. And I'm going to be very careful because I don't know how crusty that one is. So what I've done is I've uh, Increase the limit on the dim bulb tester to maximum limit, 
just so that we don't get excessive current draw. Let's try that. And there's very little left. I cleaned the board with uh, IPA. I put it on its side and used a brush and it sort of all runs down. You collect it at the bottom and you clean it with uh, tissue paper as you go along. It came out quite nicely. And uh, then I went and uh, cleaned up the back. I've put in the left panel already. Still need to clean the heat sink and uh, the right panel. Put that on as well. But it's getting there, nearly there. The uh, screws were de-rusted. As you can see, they came out beautifully. So now it's time for the top, bottom sides. Well, nothing too dramatic there. I just cleaned the top uh, cover, put that on with those two screws at the back. Did the same with the bottom. The feet are the ones, are the screws that hold it in place. And um, everything is basically done. The two exceptions are the side panels. Now I'm going to have to work a bit on that. I have to find some veneer, and I've got some veneer that's very similar to this, but a bit lighter. Obviously it's going to need some staining, but um, I'm going to see what I can do. I need to dampen it a bit. It's very brittle, so I'll show you the result when it's done. Well, here we are. We finally come to the end of this, and um, rather a unusual repair dash restoration because it had very little of either of those. And uh, I've learned something else, which... Uh, as you probably know by now, it's something I like doing. What I've learned is never use anything that needs 12 hours to dry between coats when you're trying to do a restoration where you want to finish the video. That is the uh, side panel which I've uh, glued new veneer to. And I found the varnish that matched the color that I wanted. It's not bad. It's not perfect, but it's not bad at all. Stuck the veneer on there, and then I've given two coats, but this thing requires 12 hours between coats, which is a bit of a problem, because as I said, I've wanted to finish this. But this is why these panels aren't pushed in properly. I need to give it another coat or two, but I think for the purposes of uh, the video, I'm going to finish off here, and the result I'm very happy with. Everything turned out pretty nicely. Everything works. And I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of reception. And then I think we're done with this guy. Can't leave it here for too long because of the music. Trying to find some talk radio. It's always music when you want speech. And what I found is that the AFC works very, very well. Watch this. It loses it about one megahertz later. The tuning indicator is working, the stereo light is on, and the AFC really holds on nicely. So let me try long wave and medium wave now. Let's try medium wave first. I've just moved the antenna to the uh, AM external antenna connector.
el Reino Unido el número de contagios a los que se incluyen estos La corta, Pilar, ¿cómo transcurre este primer de fronteras? Pues hasta ahora, Fernando, sin incidentes y con absoluta normalidad. La... Estamos viendo a vecinos que no habíamos visto nunca a través de los balcones. Yo... Portuguese station, the only one. What can I tell you? Um, it's mid-afternoon here, so I didn't expect much of medium wave, and I got a hell of a lot more than I counted on. Long wave, I expect absolutely nothing in the afternoon. Let's see what we get. On n'avait pas testé les outils de VPN pour accéder les serveurs à distance. On voit tout ce que on a des outils qu'on n'utilise pas forcément parce que soit on utilise que des clients, soit on n'a pas besoin de les utiliser. Mais en fait, si ils ont fait That's it, folks. I got a lot more than I expected. I really expected absolutely nothing. So there we have it. That's the end of this project. This was kind of a weird one, as you probably have realized. It was neither a restoration nor a repair. It was a very, very uh, simple procedure of changing three capacitors, the filter caps, which really needed. The remainder were in excellent condition. I needed to do absolutely nothing to them. And sometimes you just have to acknowledge that, you know, things are okay, leave them be. The fact that this thing was all uh, aluminium obviously saved it from any damage. It held up uh, very, very well. And the, uh, the tuning lamps, the lamps were off as well. I managed to find some replacements that actually worked. The uh, side panels obviously needed to be re-veneered and that was done. So it's just a question of letting them dry and do a bit of more finishing on it. And then uh, this thing's ready for some action. So I, uh, I'm actually quite keen to get on to the next thing. I'm sitting at home with this bloody virus problem. Not that I have it, but um, we're all sort of in isolation. They've just found the uh, first case in Madeira, which is a big deal. And um, so everybody's gone a little bit crazy. And so have we. So I'm uh, ready for the next project, which is really a blessing that, uh, you know, there's something to do when you're sitting at home for a couple of weeks and you can't even really go outside. So I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you all for watching, if you've been watching this. And um, if you do enjoy this sort of thing, please uh, subscribe, click share, like, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.